Hey guys, Roman Eating Reaper here. So yep, it's it's raining on it. I'm at the cinema, prime weather, and I'm about to head in, 88 miles an hour. Yep, I'm in the cinema, about to see Back to the Future. <laughs> Obviously, love this movie. It is a classic. And just the opportunity to see it on the big screen is one I just could not resist. It's not my first time seeing it at the cinema, but, you know, the opportunity presented itself, so I figured, <laughs> why not, you know? Uh, it's a classic. So yeah, I'm gonna head in, get my snack, get my seat, and go see Back to the Future on the big screen. So yeah, I'm back from seeing Back to the Future. Now, obviously, I've seen this a few times over the years, you know, it's a classic. In fact, ironically, the last time I saw this was at the cinema, back in 2020, shown at a local art centre cinema, which recently shot for renovation, but it'll be back. But, you know, even with this not being my first time seeing it on the big screen, the opportunity just couldn't resist, like, you know. Especially, you know, getting the opportunity to see it with an audience, you know, these re-releases are very reliable at bringing in the crowd, you know, even when the, you know, a lot of the new release blockbusters are struggling, you know, you know, re-releases of older movies are, you know, very reliable crowd pleasers. But, does the film hold up on a cinema screen in the year of our Lord, 2024? Let's find out. So the film, of course, follows Marty McFly, a teenager living in Hill Valley with his parents, George and Lorraine, and his siblings, Dave and Linda. He has a girlfriend named Jennifer, and a close relationship with Dr. Emmett Brown. One day, Doc Brown shows Marty his newest invention, a plutonium-powered time machine built into a DeLorean. Marty ends up having to use the DeLorean and ends up stuck in 1955 where he meets younger versions of his parents and soon finds himself in a race against time to get back to 1985 if he has any chance of still existing. So yeah look, obviously I loved this movie, you know, it is just such a, you know, a big-hearted, sincere, feel-good movie. It's it's just utterly irresistible, a, you know, an absolute blast, and, you know, it's one that is really best experienced with an audience. Uh, and obviously, narratively speaking, it is incredibly compelling stuff, but, you know, obviously... You know, it's a time travel movie, and it's got, you know, the high concept central hook of, you know, of DeLorean time machine, stuck in the past, have to get back to the future. And, you know, obviously, yes, you know, there is time travel movie stuff in here of, you know, the consequences of messing with the space-time continuum. And, in fact, there's plenty of, you know, time-related stakes, very compelling stuff, you know. As Marty has a week to get back to 1985, if he, you know, if he is to even still exist. But, you know, this isn't really, you know, a, you know, a witty, complex time travel movie. In fact, this is more of a simple, character-driven film about, you know, taking control of your own destiny. Like, like yes, you know, this is by very much about how, you know, yes, external forces can gently nudge you on the path you're meant to be headed, but ultimately really the only one who can inspire any sort of meaningful change is yourself. And it gets plenty of great character development out of that, especially in regards to Marty and his parents, as he you know, inspires them to become better versions of themselves, and ultimately inspires change for the better within himself as well. It's, you know, great, compelling, well-written character development. It also gets great moments of comedy out of, you know, Marty's unique fish-out-of-water circumstances, you know, 
and the contrast between the past, you know, 1955 and 1985. And uh, it leaves us some great moments there. Uh, do get plenty of big laughs, uh, notably the iconic scene in which George has a visit from Darth Vader from the planet Vulcan. <laughs> you know, just absolutely hilarious stuff. You know, all these iconic scenes do get big laughs, which are, you know, best experienced with a, a cinema audience. And yes, of course, there are great performances in here. Obviously, Michael J. Fox himself as Marty, you know, He's great, he's incredibly charismatic, he's likeable, he's funny. But also, you know, has that fear of rejection deep within him. It's great stuff. He's, you know, a proper, you know, a properly iconic, likeable leading character. And Christopher Lloyd, of course, is a ton of fun as the <laughs> slightly mad Dr. Brown. He, he's, he's great. Well, what's not the love about him? But... <laughs> And uh, Leah Thompson and Crispin Glover are great as both the younger and older versions of Marty's parents, yeah. Whether it be the, his mother as a you know, young, love struck teenage girl versus, you know, the, <laughs> the alcoholic as an adult, or even the, you know, the meek, unconfident demeanor of, of George as this, you know, aspiring sci fi writer, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of great performances in here, which you know really sells the compelling and well-rounded character work at play. And of course, you know, from a technical perspective, the film is incredibly well made. You know, the the score from Alan Silvestri, iconic. Of course, you know, got <laughs> Huey Lewis and the News songs made for the film, which yes, instantly iconic. You'll in instantly recognizable today. And, you know, you've got great sound design for the DeLorean, you know, it's, it's really well made. And admittedly, yes, there are some effect shots in here, which, you know, in 2024 do look kind of dated. And ironically, you know, learning about the film's post-production schedule, there were shots that actually were incomplete, you know, kind of rushed to meet its release date. But, you know, a lot of, like... But saying that, you know, from a technical perspective, a lot of it really does hold up today, and yeah, it's really great stuff. And in fact, ironically, all of this is encapsulated by something that I've only just clocked this viewing. Obviously, I've seen this a few times over the years, but this viewing, I've clocked how good the pacing is. Like, I seriously, it's obviously, you know, a combination of you know how good the writing and the character development and how engaging the narrative is but the film just flies by like obviously you know <laughs> no sooner has marty ended up in 1955 and you know met his parents and and the film just you know goes by and the the iconic scene of him performing johnny be good <laughs> at the enchantment under the sea dance comes what feels like a lot sooner than it actually is, because, you know, you know, because you're so invested in the narrative and how well written it is, you sort of realise, oh wait, we're in the third act now, like, like, yeah, incredibly good pacing, um, and I think this could only be achieved thanks to, you know, the writing, the characters, and, you know, and a great set of performances, you know, it's just an all-round great movie. And yeah, Back to the Future gets a 9 out of 10. So yeah, let me know down in the comments uh, what do you think of Back to the Future. Have you seen it at the cinema? Uh, and what was your experience like? And do you think it still holds up today? Let me know all that down in the comments. Don't forget the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Don't forget to the subscribe button if you're new, and don't forget to turn post notifications so you don't miss an upload. <laughs>